This is the Getting Started video for C++. I'd like to take a moment to talk about readability. The most important goal in any project is readability. If you can't understand it, you can't maintain it, upgrade, change, or debug it. In this course, there will be a strong emphasis not only in learning and writing C++ code to solve problems, but also writing code that is reason readable. The reason I put such a strong emphasis on readable code is because it helps eliminate so many problems. The effort you put in to make your code readable easily pays for itself many times over. Most of the time, readable code pays for itself in all the technical support calls you don't have to answer. Every bug in your code has the potential to generate one technical support call per customer. If each technical support call takes just 30 minutes to answer and go through all the documentation and walk them through the changes and the fixes, and 30, much, 30 minutes really isn't that much time, it wouldn't take that many calls to fill up your day or even your whole week. The coding standards I show you in this course are designed to make your code readable so that you have less bugs and therefore less technical support phone calls. Now, unless you've ever had the responsibility of having to answer technical support calls and the whole process of managing the fixes and the quality assurance and the source control and the versioning and the updates and all that stuff then you really have to take my word for this you don't get to second guess me I have done technical support phone calls I've had the responsibility for that and let me tell you it is a monster and that's why it's so important to get the fundamentals in so you can avoid as much of that as possible also there's another reason that it's it, it because it's in your best interest to write readable code if you write code that only you can understand you will be stuck supporting it you'll never be able to hand it off to another programmer and your boss will soon stop putting you on new projects because you'll be stuck uh, you'll be so busy supporting the old ones and you'll be stuck in technical support mode until you leave or probably quit your job which is no fun what I like to do is I like to do a project, I like to do it right, I like to make it readable so I can easily hand it off or give it to somebody else and then move on to the next one. That means I can do more projects in a shorter period of time and I get more experience which makes me more valuable. As I stated in the new C++ project how-to video, you must build your code before it will run. Now I reused the video for SCT51. The only difference is at the very end you should name your source files, not data files, but source files, with a .cpp instead of a .c extension. The process of building translates your source code into machine code. Source code is what we write, usually it's in a high level language, and a high level language is more English like. A low level language is more machine code like. It's easier to write code in a high level language, but it is less efficient. C and C++ try to strike a balance between the ease of writing and control of resources. There are two types of programs that translate source code into machine code. Those are compilers and interpreters. Compilers translate all your code at once and save the results in a file. That file is usually an executable file with a .exe extension. Interpreters translate the code one line at a time. With interpreted language, each time the program is run, it must the code must be translated all over again. For some of you, this may be sad news, but both printf and scanf have been superseded by cout and cin in C++. Cout stands for C output, and cin stands for C input. Now, in SET 151, I made you use printf and scanf because they are dangerous, and you can have all kinds of mistakes with them, and you learn to be careful. In C++, we're going to move on and concentrate on other things, so we're going to change to the cout and cin. Now the syntax for both of the commands is pretty easy. For output, you use the insertion operator to direct the output to the cout function. So you have the keyword cout, then the insertion operator, which is less than, less than, and then any string, literal, any number, any variable, or any constant. And if you want multiple ones, you just um, separate them with the insertion operator, kind of like a common delimited list, but it's an insertion operator delimited list. So C out, insertion operator, I love Star Trek. Uh, insertion operator is end L. By the way, that's an L, not an I, so end of line. And that is the programmatic equivalent of 
print, actually it should be print F. I love Star Trek slash N. Now you can still use the slash N in C out, um, whatever's more readable. For input, you use the extraction operator to direct the input to a variable. So, for example, CN extraction operator STR buffer, CN extraction operator LNG value is the equivalent of scanf percent %s STR buffer, scanf percent %ld, and percent %lng value. Now, you should use CN and C out instead of scanf printf in your code. So, we're going to say goodbye, scanf printf. We'll miss you. <laughs> That's about all I want to cover for right now. We'll start off with two review hom homeworks that cover most of what we went over in C1. Now some of you had C1 just last semester. For others it may have been a while and they need a refresher. The two review homeworks will get your brain back into the C way of thinking. And next week we'll start off with an introduction to classes where we will learn about polymorphism, inheritance, and encapsulation. And that's the end of the video.